here we go. I'm get myself set up here. Get the sonar in the water. So we are setting up sonar. New stick. Got to get that all figured out. Uh, we get the sonar in the water, and that way we can figure out what we're doing, what our depths are, and all that stuff. But there you go. Give it a second here. I get myself prepared. So sonar is on. So we're using the Solex 12. Um, I'm gonna see what we can see. That's the bottom. That's our water column right there. I wanna see if I can get off at night mode or so we get out here. I got some uh, imaging coming down the pike here. It's, it's like it's four feet of depth. I don't see uh, I'm not getting my depth I'm in the corner I'm gonna work my way over to there around the grasses pools but, you know it's not bad again I'm, I'm 100 feet to the right 100 feet to the left but when I get in closer I'm gonna adjust the sensitivity um, let's just no I don't want to do that I don't want to do that I don't want to do that let's go 65 feet There we go. A little bit of range. Okay. And then sensitivity. No, that's too much. There we go. So I'm at the pad. I'm just going to go over that rock pile. Problem is, is I'm just getting filled with cattails and sorry with uh, lily pads and all kinds of junk in here. So I'm, I, and there's no way I'm at 13 feet of water, but it's really hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edge. Right now I'm just picking up every single lily pad on the planet Earth. And I just don't think that sonar is going to be able to pick up when they need to because it's just getting covered with stuff. Uh, makes it difficult. But we'll see what we got. See those pine trees up on the top of the hill? That straight line of pine trees right there on the top. That's the elevation that he was at. So Michael Sinat was missing, you know, Father's Day. Um, I think it was, I don't even know, it's been four years. So 2019, right before COVID. Um, and he was, um, he was just not right in the right mind. He was reading the Bible. He was, he was struggling with a lot of things. And uh, he said, I love you to make sure that everybody loves each other. Make sure you guys take care of one another. And then the next night he disappeared. Uh, he was seen in South Kingston at the post office and multiple police officers uh, were at the scene when he was pulled over for some reason. Um, but it was never, he was never arrested and the car wasn't impounded. He was let go and, and they, he was there at like 11 o'clock at night. 
which is not abnormal. Um, but then he left, he, he either went home or he went back to Burger King and then came back. But he, it's almost like he was getting his courage up to get it to come in here and and to do something. And I don't know if he'd ever walked out here to the geocaches, but the geocaches are on the top of that hill at, at, the, at those pine trees. There's um, there's one there, there's one on the other side of the hill, but this is the, t the highest elevation in Great Swamp, and this is Warden's Pond. It's only five feet deep, four feet deep, three feet deep. So it's not like a place, like there's maybe one 14 foot hole out front, maybe, uh, you know, I'm struggling because I'm just getting weeded up and, and covered in lily pads every time I put the stick in, but, um, I mean, could he have gone in here? Yes. Could he have sunk? Yes. Would he have floated? Yes. Would he have moved anywhere if he did? I don't know. There's not really a current in here. Like, I'm not... Like, I could sit right here, and I probably would stay here for, for a good long time in this area because there's no current. Even the Pawkatuck River it flows in here. It pushes a little bit, but I, I don't see it pushing a body. And... There are houses on this whole side, and the Pawkatuck River would push that backpack or the person over to there, unless Michael was weighted down in the backpack with rocks. We did find rocks with the state police at the front of, of the um, of the boat ramp, you know. But I didn't I didn't see anything. You know, one of the things I do here right now is I hear the train. Um, I don't know if you would have heard that that night because um, he was in here between one and five in the morning. It's getting nicer out. It's a good thing. I'm in the middle of the pond. I'm in four and a half feet of water. It's just filled with grass. There's really nothing out here that I can find so far. Um, and with five feet of water, or four and a half feet of water, it's really difficult to, um, because the grasses are like three to four feet high. So you're picking up all the grasses on the sonar system. But really awesome place. So, so again, right up there, those pine trees that you see in the distance, and the pines that are up on the top of the hill, that's where Michael went missing. So. He was on the highest elevation, and it all leads to here. And, you know, I'm gonna go over to that house in the distance, and then work my way back to the docks. But uh, give it one more a little quick try to see if I can find something that maybe says he was out here. Again, this was an amphibious landing base back in, in the war, and um, really cool place back then. But, soldiers would fly into here with their amphibious planes and land and then uh, this whole section was actually used for the base. Warden's Pond in the old Saturn with the American flag as our base for our sonar system with our stick. It sticks at an angle because it's filled with junk. But the old Nissan Ford stroke. So we're looking for, you know, a car underwater that has a shape, you know, and the dimension is either, you know, 14 feet or that's 14 feet. So you have to know underwater if this is the object you're looking for and that's a rock on top of it, or if that's 
the, a vehicle sitting on top of a big rock precipice. I'm more interested in this one here in the back. I just don't know what that elevations are and the width and the length. So I'm working on that. Um, and this is for Robert Cavanaugh. So Robert Cavanaugh went missing on December 21st of 2004. Um, I went up from Willimantic after the last search and I worked my way all the way through Andover, through Bolton and up into Rockville through Vernon. Uh, I went by the, bot, the uh, Bolton Notch Pond. Uh, I went into Coventry Lake. I went into the Chetucket River. So my first moves on the day was to actually, let me just pull this one out, was to actually go through Jewett City and come in uh, through uh, OCCUM, OCUM. So go to Gagner Pond and go into the Chetucket River at the bottom where it meets um, the Thames River north of Norwich. And so Robert's missing in an area that where there's a lot of rivers and there's a lot of water, a lot of ponds, a lot of reservoirs. So the Chetucket River, though, I don't think was frozen in December 21st. A lot of these other things like Gagner Pond and uh, Bolton Notch Pond uh, and Coventry Lake and, and Andover Lake, those are frozen, I think, um, in 2004 at that time. So I then went to a few boat ramps um, in this section. Uh, checked out Columbia Lake. I checked out the boat ramps. I checked out the, this is the picture of the Bolton Pond, like the Bolton Notch. I then went to the Risley Reservoir. But earlier in the day, I, I have a better feeling about Wyndham Center Road and um, the Chetucket Plains Road Park off of Lover's Lane. Um, this bridge is on Lover's Lane, off of Lover's Lane. There's a section where there's the ability to put a car in right through the middle of that gap right there on both sides. You could pretty much launch it back in the day in 2004. And it's at the end of this runway. Which would make logical sense where you would just think that you would die on impact, but instead you would sink and then you would go in the water and no one found you for 19 years. So that's the case. So this is Robert Kavanaugh. Back, back in when he was 51 years old, he's now 70. So I'm gonna look at the Chetucket River and then I'm gonna look where he was, uh, had his wedding vows or his wedding. Uh, I'm gonna look at Bolton Lake, Crystal Lake, see if they have any depths. Uh, I'm gonna look at the Paper Mill Pond, see if it has depths. Um, and, but sh that, that's interesting to me just because it was in his hometown, down the street from St. Uh, from St. Uh, Joseph's uh, Church. At the same time, it's where he had his wedding vows and he was in a divorce and he was very unhappy and sad. Um, at the same time, had four children. So a lot, lot of stress on his dad that, you know, can't get his life together right in front of St. Joseph's Church. And now I'm here on the Chautauqua River, which is in essence, if he went south towards Norwich, um, the Chautauqua River has the ability to, to hold a car. So I. I want to look at the depths. Uh, I got rocks right here, as you can see. Get rocks. Um, but I want to see if I can find a deep hole that this guy would know about that he could have driven the car right into. Like, bombing it right through there. I think you probably see marks on these rocks. That rock's moved. But that looks like a deep hole where the swimming hole is. Um, and there is access. So I'm gonna put the boat in and see what I can do. And uh, see what I can find. The Chetucket River.
is Robert Cavanaugh in the Shittucket River. Is he in that hole? The only way to find out is to rip the engine up, move into that section. And we look upstream. Get down that hill into that hole. Much deeper. So we get the Sprague River boat ramp. Or Robert even knew about the Sprague River Park. I think it's I mean, I think he would because of the fishing. Um I I'm gonna come back to it. It's on the way back home. I just want to get closer to recon everything and then make a decision where I'm putting in a couple times. So I'm in the Chetucket River, um, and it's thin in this section. So, but there are two deep holes. So I will double check those two deep, deep holes. But I want to get closer to town first. I want to work my way up. I want to see are there any other boat ramps other than this one? Because this is as far as I think you would drive. There's a dam there. I don't think you can get into that dam at Chetucket. So. That's the, the Chetucket Dam. The Chetucket River, where I'm at right now, is that. So, let's see if you can see that. I'll give it to you like this. So, I'm on Main Street in Baltic. And Wyndham is up there. Willimantic is up there. And Mansfield's around the corner. So, if in fact he was headed to Norwich or Jewett City, and headed south out of town versus north like we thought towards 84 and instead he went towards Norwich I just don't know but I'm gonna double check some of this stuff here like Wyndham Franklin and the uh, river that you know the Chetucket River that goes all the way back to Willimantic and Mansfield Center and, and touches with the Nechalk and the Willimantic so that's where we're at. So I'm in the Chetucket River. I don't think that he can get through this with his two-wheel drive B2000 little pickup truck. It just, uh, I don't think he can get over there. But what I'm looking at here is the Chetucket River Water Trail, National Recreational Trail. And I'm here on the river. This is like Willimantic and, and that area I just came through. And, and these are the bends and the turns. Like he could be there where the, where the road crosses over. Along this line here. He could be under the bridge right there. He could be on the bend and the turn. He can't get anywhere in here. There's no road access in there. He could be there in Sprague where I was at already at the Sprague boat ramp. He could be under the bridge here. He could be under the bridge there. So the question is, did Mr. Cavanaugh drive through this town from Mansfield Center past St. Joseph's Scenario number two, headed towards his mom's house. Did he go that way? And what is along the way, on the way to Vernon and the other St. Joseph's, what else could he have run into or made the decision that this is the location, this is the day? So I'm going to see what we can find. I'm gonna to drive through town and I'm gonna look. So what I don't know is if they ever did the Willimantic River on this side or looked at it from the standpoint of um, is it plausible that he was going to Vernon and he's driven this road from his this place this is the this is the main road to Vernon so did he go to the Willimantic River and if so where is that spot? Willimantic River is right there. And there's a road that goes right down to it. And we're entering Columbia. 
and the Willimantic River right here. Footbridge over there. And it looks like there's an old access there. And then there's also the bus access there, but those, those are gated. So we're gonna keep on looking. Driving to Vernon. Looking for Robert Cavanaugh. Missing December 21st, 2000, I believe in four. Interesting duck pond. Wonder what that is. Bright sun. The man moves great food. So we are uh, driving up towards Vernon, Connecticut. See if we can uh, find a spot that is on the way to mom's house that is more plausible coming from his house. So, did Robert drive this road back? I wanna look at those other two spots. I wanna put the boat in. I might stay in this little motel right here tonight. So I'm close, keep it really simple. Or maybe something cleaner. <laughs> oh, that's it. But yeah, just gonna keep on looking. Gonna look for a spot that looks like it's so easy. If you just sit there for a little while into the dark and then you disappear. But it has to be a river. I just, it was December, it was cold. It was right before Christmas. I just don't think the ponds are accessible. So, let me see. So I'm in Columbia Lake, Columbia, Connecticut. Looking for Robert Cavanaugh. And uh, this is a little too soft here. You know, I think you'd probably see some parts of car at this point floating around. You'd see some of the tail ends. And I guess maybe Sometimes you can see nothing, but it just looks too shallow to jump up there, but really beautiful night. You'd have to come down that. That gate's closed after September. If the water was up there, you'd have to get through that. You can come down through here, but it's like six inches in here. So, you know, and then you get out to here, it looks like it drops off a good ways, but is it deep enough in there to hide a vehicle? I think it, it's dark right there. How deep is that section right there in these buoys? So I'm in Bolton at this Bolton Preserve area, right off of Route 6. I'm looking at areas like this, where there's an access hole. I just think that this would have been frozen December of 2004 slash 2005. Um, and I just don't know if a car can get in here, float and sink, and then not be seen. There's a beaver hut right there, straight there. Um, I just don't think it's deep enough in this section to hide a car. I'm going to drive all the way down and see, but you know, I'm, I'm working my way towards Vernon. So you might be able to drive the B2000 Mazda into there. And this is a deeper hole at Bolton Preserve. Um, I think we, we're going to have to clear this one definitely I, I think it's shallow though like I, I see it's a log right there you know it does drop off there's a couple big rocks from kids throwing rocks in there it might drop off into that hole right there it looks shallow right there in the middle there's a pile of stuff I don't know I mean it's you got a big cliff here I think we need to at least uh, double check this one just to make sure. In Vernon. And 
you can come straight down that hill anywhere and drive straight in. No problem at all into this corner. Float, sink, you never be seen. So I think we need to check this one definitely, buddy. I think this was, uh, I mean, look at this hill. Like you could literally just go straight in. I mean, it's been 19 years. He could go straight down that hill. He, you know, may have thought that someone would have seen him so that they could save his life and no one saw it. So, Risley Reservoir. I think we need to double check this one and uh, cover our bases. And we need to sonar ball Vernon Street uh, just to make sure, just because it's too close to home. So. Again, don't know the depth, but these rocks and this area was not like this before. This is newer, and you can just drive in anywhere along here. So, is it deep enough? I don't think so. But maybe over at the corner. This is the closest body of water to St. Joseph's Church. If that car hit it here. This could be interesting. I think we need to check this one. I think that's the end of my journey tonight. Um, of Fairmont, sorry, and here it is right here on video. It is right. Hey, free diving and there. confirmed it's a dark colored vehicle. I just couldn't hold my breath long enough to actually see number plates and stuff. But I was down on the front windscreen, I was on the roof, rubbed the roof, and it's a dark color. Good argue it's a 